Cocaine bound for the U.S. and passing through the Caribbean almost triples in the past year. How did the Caribbean once again become the weak link in the war on drugs? We are seeing a, an increase of the drugs flowing through the Caribbean at approximately 14 percent, um, up from 5 percent. The struggle for the clear blue waters of the region between law enforcement and narco traffickers. Why the war on drugs just got more intense on this episode of 18 Degrees North. Eighteen Degrees North is brought to you by Grace. Grace Coconut Water presents A Few Seconds with the World's Fastest Woman. When you step into the blocks, you've got to believe in yourself, be yourself, and always be good to yourself. Life is fast. Hydrate well with Grace Coconut Water. I love Jen Money Transfer. Yo, love my Jen Money Transfer card. I love the way they understand me. I just love how the money reach real fast. I love that it's my connection to home. I love that it is so very convenient. I love the way they help me say I love you. I might think this. It's a love thing. Grace Coconut Water presents Quality Time with the world's fastest woman. My life is fast. Even when I'm not on the track, I'm busy running around. I always take the time to refresh. Life is fast. Hydrate well with Grace Coconut Water. Hello, I'm Zara Burton and welcome to 18 Degrees North. It's from right here in Kingston, Jamaica, where every week we're going to be taking you on a global journey with us as we bring you a newer perspective on Caribbean affairs. And we begin tonight with the war on drugs. Long before it went to Mexico and Central America, the Caribbean was the most important route for cocaine shipments. In the 1980s, 80% 80 of cocaine bound for the United States came from our shores, more specifically through the Bahamas. But after dropping precipitously for the last three decades, the cocaine trade is now making a comeback. This time it's the Dominican Republic that traffickers are using as one of their main transit points. As the stakes get higher, traffickers are getting more sophisticated. Jessica Hasbun is 18 degrees north and 70 degrees west, reporting on the Caribbean's latest war on drugs. We're currently on top of uh, what appears to be two launches heading basically eastbound. Under the cloak of darkness, suspected drug traffickers arrive by boat to the Dominican Republic's southern coast. A group of men waits on shore to transfer the shipment of South American cocaine onto other boats and onward to consumers in the United States and Europe. Smuggling operations like this one move thousands of kilos of cocaine from Colombia, Bolivia, Peru, Venezuela and Curaçao through the Caribbean corridor. While almost all the cocaine that reaches the U.S. is smuggled through Central America and Mexico, a drug war there is pushing traffickers back to the Caribbean. Este problema, uh, va a ser peor. This problem is going to get worse before it gets better. When traffickers leave Central America, they are looking for new routes. In the Caribbean, no place is as attractive as the Dominican Republic. The country does not grow or process narcotics, yet because of corruption, Big ports with poor controls and a shared language with the main drug smuggling countries like Colombia and Venezuela, the Dominican Republic is the Caribbean's most sought after territory for drug traffickers. La República Dominicana is the Dominican Republic is a victim of its geography. This year, a full 6% of cocaine entering the U.S. is expected to flow through the Dominican Republic double the percentage from just three years ago. Recent crackdown on drug routes by air has only pushed traffickers to the sea. When they used airplanes, they could only bring 200 and 300 kilos. They can transport as much as 2,000 kilos of cocaine. 
Both with more than 200 horsepower, they use satellite phones to communicate with their partners here in the Dominican Republic. Once on land, traffickers target ports like this one, Caucedo, one of the largest in the Caribbean. With a single X-ray scanner, officials can search only 5% of more than 1 million shipping containers per year. It's impossible to okay. It would be impossible to scan all the containers that come through Port Caucedo. Imagine that would stop or delay the operation of the port and that would cause severe economic repercussions. That has left the port vulnerable to drug smugglers. Arturo del Tiempo, a Spanish citizen, pictured here with then President Leonel Fernandez, was in 2010 charged with smuggling eight tons of cocaine to Spain in cargo ships from the Dominican Republic. Mexican Sinaloa cartel, headed by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, who the U.S. government calls the most powerful drug trafficker in the world, is also known to have penetrated the port. Last year, security forces seized more than 800 kilos of cocaine, allegedly shipped by cartel members. It was hidden in a container full of tobacco bound for Spain. Traffickers use just about anything to disguise their cargo, in sacks of rice and in cans of food. It's very common for them to use false walls in the containers, for example, but that's just one of the mechanisms. And now they're becoming even more brazen, using the Dominican Republic to not just ship cocaine, but also to set up production labs like this one found in early September a first in the country. While homicide rates have declined slightly in recent years, authorities see more evidence that the drug trade is fueling crime, including an increase in the smuggling of weapons used in eight of every ten homicides. Just recently, a group of alleged drug traffickers caught unloading nearly 500 kilos from a speedboat opened fire on a Dominican military helicopter. A firefight ensued in which two of the suspected drug traffickers were killed. It was one of the dozens of successful seizures carried out by Dominican authorities this year. In January alone, off the country's southern coast, authorities confiscated nearly two tons of cocaine off Saona Island and close to 600 kilos in the Punta Cana airport. We have hit them hard, and with the help of the local drug enforcement and the Air Force, we have seized more than 7,700 kilos of cocaine and three of heroin, and that's just in 10 months. Those are hard hits to drug organizations. This year, the country is on track to top the record of nine tons of cocaine it seized last year. But those seizures are also signs that more drugs are entering the country since authorities tend to catch only a third or less of what's trafficked. With limited resources, Dominican authorities have to choose their battles in the drug fight. To maintain in high seas naval units patrolling, we take a big chunk of our budget because of the high gas prices. Uh, this hearing will come to order. Uh, we are here today at the most recent Senate hearing on Caribbean drug trafficking. Ambassadors from the Dominican Republic and other traditional drug transshipment countries like the Bahamas and Jamaica requested more support. In spite of our combined efforts, which are run into millions of dollars and hundreds of expended human lives, we have not been able to achieve the lasting effect that we desire. We believe the time has come for the U.S to finally become the sequel partner to the DR in the fight against the drug trafficking. The U.S. government has since stepped in with over $2 million in drug interdiction equipment, including a speedboat, communication and infrared night vision devices. As we gather today, in May, Vice President Joe Biden was also in Trinidad pledging to do more. That's why in 2009 we launched the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative. And that's why even in the time of tight budgets in my country, 
We're increasing our investment, which already stands at over $200 million. But that Caribbean initiative is only a tenth of what the Obama administration is spending in Central America and Mexico. That leaves the Caribbean as open turf for criminal organizations vying for a slice of the 400 billion global drug trade and officials with little more than an educated guess as to where drug traffickers will strike next. We're currently on top of uh, what appears to be two launches heading basically eastbound. <laughs> Do you think the Caribbean could be doing more to win the war on drugs? Send us your thoughts on Facebook and on Twitter. We're there to keep everyone connected to the Caribbean. Coming up on 18 Degrees North, we speak to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency. When operations increased in Mexico and Central America, the traffickers shipped to the Western, Central, Eastern Caribbean to get the drugs up to the United States and Europe. Special Agent Vito Warina takes us to the new frontier in this returning war on drugs. That's next on 18 Degrees North. The preceding segment was brought to you by Grace. Of life. First Global Bank presents Rewards Your Way, the Visa Credit Cards Rewards program that gets you the stuff you really want. Of course there's travel and hotel, but there's also merchandise from our vendor partners, name brand appliances and accessories, hardware and tools, designer furniture, access to amazing local attractions and even groceries. First Global Rewards Your Way makes the impossible possible, with the best Visa Rewards program and the lowest interest rates in Jamaica. What are you waiting for? Upgrade your card to FGB Visa today. Finally, a way to help control your diabetes. Introducing Caribbean Dreams Cinnamon Mint Diabetic Tea. Caribbean Dreams Cinnamon Mint Diabetic Tea is all natural and sweetened with stevia leaves, a plant sweetener that's safe for diabetics. Cinnamon increases the body's ability to regulate blood sugar. Peppermint is high in antioxidants and soothes the stomach. Take control of your diabetes with Caribbean Dreams Cinnamon Mint Diabetic Tea. Exercise. You know important. Grace Frankfurters, Jamaica's favorite Frankfurters. Everybody is family. 